Hello, welcome fellow traders. AMP Futures here presenting another how to video. In today's video, we're going to give you a general overview of how to work with the charts and navigate through the charts using the TradingView mobile app. Now, navigating and understanding how to work with the charts is very important so you can make quick changes on the fly or maybe make any adjustments to your chart. For example, you could change the background color of the chart, maybe perhaps change the colors of the candles, also switch from different instruments, change time frames, things of that nature. So right now we're currently looking at the micro e-mini S&P 500. This is an exchange traded futures contract that trades on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. And let's go over some basic elements on the chart itself. First thing you'll notice on the top right, top left, or top of the chart, you'll notice the actual symbol. So right now we're looking at the micro e-mini S&P 500. As just mentioned, you'll see the last trade price at the moment, which will change colors depending on, or actually the overall change of the day is, is the market's been down since the open. That's why it's red. So right now, market's currently trading at 54, 55 and a half. You can see on the right side price axis that the last trade price is green. That's representing the last change of tick was an uptick. There you can see it just went red. That means the last change was a down tick. So whenever you see the last trade price change colors from green to red, that just lets you know that the last tick was an uptick or a down tick. You also see right below it a bar countdown timer as well. Right now, if you notice the bottom of the chart, right above where it says chart, it says 15M, we're looking at a 15 minute time frame. So this means 24 seconds, the next 15 minute candle will start. So again, on the top of the chart, right, right below where it says micro e and P500, you'll see the last trade price, but the reason why it's showing red is because the market's down three and a quarter, three and a half points since the open, about 6%. So that's gonna be red if it's down since the open, it'll be green if it's up since the open. Now we've already covered how to place trades on the TradingView mobile app, so we're gonna not cover the topics of the buy and sell buttons that you see there at the top, but those are what those buttons represent, just the ability to place market orders, and then a little AMP logo to the right will get you into your account summary. But we've already done that in a prior video, so just be sure to watch that if you have if you wanna learn how to place trades on the TradingView mobile app. So first thing I wanna cover first is how to change symbols on your chart. So right now, if you look at the bottom left corner, right above where it says watch list, it says MESU202. There's an actual four at the end, which represents the calendar year 2024, but it's cut off. Notice if I take my finger, I can actually scroll to a different instrument. And the instrument available within this scroll list is, is going to be based on what instruments you have added in your watch list. So if for any reason you're not able to see an instrument that you want to apply onto a chart, go to your watch list, make sure you add that symbol into the watch list, and then you'll be able to access that actual symbol within the scroll list as you can see here. So it's just a matter of just choosing the specific symbol within the scroll list and just selecting it, and then you'll see that applied onto the chart. Pretty straightforward. To the right of it, you'll see where it says 15M. Before we get to showing how to change time frames, I wanna show you first how to change the scale axis on the price axis as well as the time axis and how to scroll back to see more history on the chart itself. So first things first, on the right side price axis, if you take your finger and simply scroll up, this what this does is expand the price axis. As you can see there, if I scroll down with my finger on the price axis, this is gonna compress the price axis as you can see there. To reset the axis is simply click twice with your finger on the right side price axis and that's gonna reset the scale. Same thing with the time axis, the only difference is you're going left and right versus up and down. So if I go, notice at the bottom where it shows 6, 12, and 18 as a time frame. If I scroll to the right on the time scale, you can see that it's gonna decrease the bar spacing which is gonna make those bars look a lot more condensed, make the bars look more squished together, essentially making the bars look smaller. But if I scroll to the left, this is gonna increase the bar spacing so the gap between each candle is gonna be wider. It's gonna make those bars look a lot bigger. And same thing, if you double click with your finger on the time scale, it's gonna reset the scale to a default state. All right, so that's how you change the scaling on the price axis as well as the time axis. Now, if you wanna be able to scroll back and see more history on the chart, just grab any area on the chart and just scroll to the right. That's all you gotta do. Notice now in the bottom right corner, when you do this, you'll see an arrow up here. That's just letting you know that you're looking at historical data right now. So if you click that little arrow on the bottom right corner of the chart, it takes you right back to real-time data, and notice those arrows go away. So again, to scroll back, just simply scroll anywhere on the chart to the right with your finger, and then you wanna get back to real-time data, you wanna click the arrows on the bottom right corner, and now you're back to real-time data. Also too, if you wanna activate a crosshair, just hold your finger on the chart, and it automatically activates the crosshair, so now you can move the crosshair anywhere you want. This is nice for chart trading, so it helps you identify what price levels your, your cursors hovered, in this case, 54, 20.75. To get rid of it, just click anywhere outside of the crosshair and it removes it. So again, long click with your finger to activate, click anywhere outside the crosshair to deactivate. And that's how, that's the general, general components of the chart. One other thing I wanna point out too is right on the bottom right corner of the chart, 
right above the button with three dots, you'll see this little um, little shape there. If you click it, this allows you to kind of mess around with the, uh, the the scaling configuration as far as how you want your charts to scale as data is accumulating on the charts itself. So you can choose it, whatever you want. For example, if you want to be able to disable the countdown to bar close, you can do that. Um, if you click on labels, this allows you to set system labels, uh, symbol labels as well. So it's all personal preference. The main thing is understanding where to go to access this menu option. Bottom right corner, right above the button with three dots, it's that little icon that's underneath AL. And if you click that, it brings up this menu option. Also, the L option here on the bottom, uh, on the bottom right corner of the price axis, that just kind of gives you a different view for the price axis. So instead of having more price increments, it'll kind of scale it down and you won't see as many. But if you deselect it, you'll see more of a consistency of the price axis as well. So again, all personal preference. Now to change the time frame on the chart, on the bottom left corner, right above where it says chart, to the right of MES U202, where it says 15M, if I click on that, this brings me into the interval display. This is where you can change your data range, for example, how much historical data you want to see on the chart. So for example, one day, five day, one month, three M, three months, six months, year to date, etc. And then you also have the different time frames. So you have second intervals, you have minutes, you also have hours, you have days, you also have range charts as well. Now, if you want to be able to add a time frame that's not listed as a preset interval, so for example, look at the minute, the minute buttons there. Notice there's no, uh, let's use an example of a 10 minute time frame. You can see there's no 10 minute. So just click the button at the bottom there where it says add interval, the blue button. And all you gotta do is type in the value, as I just did there, and just hit add. Now, if you wanna change the, the specific uh, time frame, then you can do that as well. But now once you've done it, you can see now there's 10 minute that's been added and now I can actually click where it says 10M to apply a 10 minute chart onto the chart. So again, to get into your resolution display or interval display, you wanna click the current time frame at the bottom of the chart where it shows 10M. This is gonna take you into the interval display and you can choose any of the preset selections if that works for you. Otherwise you can click add interval and that's gonna allow you to choose any interval that you want by adding it. Now, as far as changing different chart types, on the bottom right corner where it shows menu, Right above it, you'll see a button with three dots. We're gonna click that button with three dots. And you'll notice on the left side there, you'll see where it says chart type. So I can select chart type, and now you can see all the available chart types that are available for you to use. Now keep in mind, I'm using a pro version of TradingView, a paid plan. So I'm gonna have more access to different chart types. For example, like time price opportunity. This is what a TPO chart looks like, which is pretty nice. But keep in mind, if you're using a basic free plan, you're not gonna have access to the, you know, the advanced chart types such as TPO, volume put footprint, things of that nature that are that are related to volume profile related chart types. So if you're if you want to get a better understanding of what chart types are available with specific plans, just go to TradingView's website, you'll be able to see a comparison of all the different plans and that will give you a better understanding of what chart types are available with what specific plans. But for now, the main thing is understanding where to go to change your chart types. Bottom right corner right above the menu button, the button with three dots, we're going to click on chart type and now I'm going to revert back to candles and now we're back to a candlestick chart. And then the last thing I want to point out that's important is if you want to change the appearance of your chart, for example, chart settings, bottom right corner, right above the menu button again, the button with three dots, we're going to click back. You can scroll down, you'll see chart settings on the bottom right corner. I'm going to click chart settings. And normally by, by default, it's going to look in this display, which is going to give you different group categories of chart settings that you can change. So for example, I can change symbol chart settings. I can change the body. I can activate borders, wick, body. I can change the colors by clicking on the color boxes. Simply choose the color type. I won't spend too much time on this. This is pretty straightforward and self-explanatory. The main thing is understanding where to go to access the chart settings. So bottom right corner, right above the menu button, the button with three dots. We're going to scroll down. We're going to go to chart settings. And normally it'll look like this as the default view. I would probably say in my opinion, you know, the most important thing would be canvas and trading. But again, it's all personal preference. Like for example, you can go into status line, you can go to scales on lines, and then canvas is really gonna allow you to change the background color of the charts, whether you want it to be a solid background. See where it shows white, I can change the color of the background there. If I wanna activate the watermark or even increase or decrease the text size and color, things of that nature. So just make your changes accordingly. Once done, click okay on the bottom right corner and those changes will be instantly applied onto the chart. Another thing as well, if you click on trading, one thing that's probably um, I wanna point out where it shows instant orders placement at the top there, usually by default, it's not selected. So when you go to place a trade, watch what happens here. For example, when I place a trade, it brings up this order ticket, and then I gotta click that sell button at the bottom to actually execute the trade. So that's, it's a secondary click in order for you to execute the trade. It's almost like an order confirmation. So if you don't want that, you gotta get back into your chart settings, bottom right corner, the button with three dots, chart settings, 
and then you want to go into the trading category group and you'll see where it says instant orders placement and then you activate it and now you'll be able to actually place a trade instantly when you click that buy or sell market button on the top of the chart and this is just a general overview of how to work and navigate through charts using the TradingView mobile app.